Let's turn now to exploring the Shema, discussions on the issues of Trinity, and let's just take a few moments to go through the uh, content. There's not a lot to um, uh, look at again tonight. We're working our way through this uh, table. Let me bump the font back down to 300. That's a little better a size. Um, we're working our way down through this table that Karm provided for us, and um, last week we looked at... Um, the fact that it is right here in this row that it is the father who sanctifies us in first thessalonians 5:23 it's the son who sanctifies us in hebrews 2:11 and it's the holy spirit who sanctifies us in first peter 1 verse 2 let's look tonight at this column or this row i'm sorry of information it is the father who is the life giver or who gives life in genesis 2:7 and john 5:21 it is the Son who gives life in John 1, 3 and in John 5, 21 again. And it is the Holy Spirit who gives life or, or supplies life um, in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, and 8. So those are the passages we're going to look at. So first, uh, before we um, uh, 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 jump into anything further, let's just uh, look at the passages in question. First one is Genesis 2, 7. Let's just turn there. And this is familiar territory for any of you who've read your Bible. Right over this side of the page, um, Moshe writes, Then the Lord God formed uh, the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. So who gives life to man? God. And we could just supply the phrase God the Father, even though it doesn't say God the Father, it says Lord God. But when we're talking about the, the Trinity or the nature of God, it became um, common terminology, in at least later on, that when God was mentioned, it was the Father God that was being referenced. It was the eternality, this, this eternal Father who was in reference, uh, owing to the fact that <clears throat> that God had already become known as the God, the Father of Israel, right? Israel's my firstborn son, things like that. So we can just apply the phrase God the Father, even though it doesn't mention the Father's name. So God is the one who breathes life into mankind. Who gives us life? God the Father. The second verse was John 5.21, and uh, this one is going to be overlapped with the Son. So let's look at this real quick. John 5.21, let me scroll down. These are Yeshua's words himself. He says, quote, For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. So in the discussion, in a discussion about resurrection, Yeshua speaking in third person, speaking of the Son, namely himself, and comparing how that his own father, remember God, can bring life to a lifeless body, namely resurrection, Yeshua says unambiguously that the Father raises the dead and gives them life. So that co corresponds with Genesis. God the Father breathes the breath of life into the nostrils of a man, and the man becomes a living creature, or he becomes, the, he becomes a living person, he comes to life. But so also, in comparison, Yeshua says, the Son gives life to whom he will. Now, does this mean that the Son could resurrect a person? Yes, we know he can and did. Yeshua resurrected a few different people, right? Lazarus is the first one I'm thinking off the top of my head. He called Lazarus out of the grave. Therefore, Yeshua has the power of resurrection as well. He has the power to resurrect the body, to bring life from lifelessness.